Mom's arm was latched so tight on mine as she marched me through the front door of Jefferson Middle School, I thought she was going to break it off. But Mom. He. Shut your mouth, Jamie. I hated when she called me that. You put that boy in the hospital. You broke his kneecap and his nose. I don't care what he did to you. We'll be lucky if his parents don't sue the hell out of us. I couldn't help but smile as I remembered him lying there, face covered in blood, writhing in pain. Oh, and you think it's funny now? You know what, that's fine. I'm done talking. Good, I thought. Of course I wasn't thinking about how when mom got silent, things tended to go very badly for me. She didn't speak again until we got into the front door. And she got all weird and crazy too. I started upstairs to my room, but she stopped me. Ah. I thought my little boy was mature enough for school, but clearly you're not. So you're gonna stay down here where mommy can keep an eye on you. Her eyes were almost glazed over as she glared at me. What are you even talking about? I started to back away toward the stairs. I'm just going to my room, mom. You're going to sit your ass on that couch until I tell you otherwise, little boy. I sat a day. But I wasn't done arguing. This is ridiculous, mom. I'm not some little. Ow. She had me by the ear, and I had no choice but to follow her into the kitchen. She ripped my pants down, grabbed a wooden spoon, and went to work. Ow. 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 Mom. Please. I'm sorry. Ow. Ow. She kept wailing away, until my protests turned into begging and pleading, then into sobbing. When my knees finally buckled, she let my shoulder go and I dropped to the floor. Little boys don't use that kind of language, especially not toward their mommies, you hear me. Yes. Yes what? Yes I hear you. Mom. You will call me mommy, or we're gonna go another round. I'm sorry. Mommy. Much better. Now you drag your little butt back into that living room, sit on the floor, and be a good little boy, and maybe mommy will let you watch some TV for a while. Yes, mommy, I dragged myself to my feet, pulled up my pants, wincing as my underpants pressed against my red-hot bottom, and limped back into the living room, trying my best to stifle my sobbing and sniffling and hiccuping. What the hell just even happened? I started to gingerly sit on the couch when she screamed again. I said floor. You're not getting snot all over my upholstery. I was getting mad again, but after that experience, all I could do was swallow my rage and sit. It didn't take five seconds for that to become too painful, so I laid over onto my side, humiliated, angry, and miserable. Now, would my little guy like to watch some TV while we wait for Sissy to come home and babysit for mommy? The threat of that spoon kept my tongue in check, though I was starting to boil over again. Yes. Mommy, I said through gritted teeth. Babysit. Really? Maggie was only four years older than me. Mom grabbed the remote and turned the TV on, to PBS. Then, to my horror, she engaged the parent lock, disabling everything but TVY. Which basically meant that I was stuck watching. Bob the Builder. Dear God, this was going to suck for two hours before Maggie got home. At least she wouldn't put up with watching this crap. Mom pulled out her phone as she went back to the kitchen and sat down, fingers flying around. Probably gossiping with her friends on Twitter or something. Every so often her eyes popped up at me, and the subtle grin never left her face. What, was she announcing to the whole world she just beat the hell out of her kid and was now being congratulated for it? My fists clenched as I stared at the TV, but the clunky stop frame and the stupid voices and all of it just grated my nerves. I started to sit up, but I was immediately reminded of why I chose to lay down in the first place, and I flopped out onto my stomach, my arms folded under my head to create the best pillow I could muster. Finally, after I'd heard enough of Elmo's shrill voice to make me sick to my stomach, the door in the foyer burst open. 
Hey mom. Hey Whittle JJ. Maggie declared as she walked into the living room. Oh, oh whoops we case someone's not a happy Whittle camper. Damn it. Mom filled her in. And obviously told her to lay it on thick. I'm not two years old, Maggie. Cut it out. A.W., is your whittle bottom still sore from mean old mommy's spankin? No. Maybe we just need a whittle nap, her grumpy dog. Mom laughed as she gathered up her purse and keys. It's a little late for a nap now. Would have been a good idea about an hour ago. I should have thought of that. Anyway, you have my permission to use the spoon on him if he gives you any trouble. She squatted in front of me, glaring down. But Whittle JJ's gonna be a good boy for sissy, isn't he? Yes. Mommy. My sister burst into giggles as mom stood up. Of course he will. Bye bye, little guy. Mommy be right back. As soon as the front door closed, I glared at Maggie. JJ. What the fuck? Her face got dark. I'm pretty sure that's what got you your last spanking, little boy. Maybe you want another one. Oh like you're really gonna, I swallowed the hard as I watched her reach for the spoon. Okay, okay, sorry, I'll be good. I started backing up toward the chair on my still sore butt. You're damn right you'll be good. You're going to do exactly what I say for the next half an hour, unless you want mom to find out about you being a bad little boy the second she left. No, please, don't tell mom. I'll do whatever you want. My bladder cramped a bit at the panic. Much better. First of all, you don't move from that spot until I give you permission. I'm gonna do some homework for a while. That's what big boys and girls do when they come home from school. You don't have any homework because you're a little boy who doesn't go to school anymore. Whatever. I gotta go to the bathroom. Does Whittle JJ gotta go potty? She grinned broadly. No, James has to go to the bathroom. Oh, too bad. You can sit there, then. A.W., come on. She ignored me. Screw it. I could hold it until Mom got back. I wasn't debasing myself any further than I already had. Twenty minutes later, I started to realize I was wrong. Maggie. She ignored me again. Maggie. You call me sissy, like mom told you. I fell silent again, trying to reposition myself so I could hold it better. I was cramping up pretty good, but mom would be home soon. It'd be worth it not to give in to my bitch sister. Five minutes later, and I was hurting, bad. Come on, Maggie. Enough is enough. No answer. Fine. Fuck this. I got up and started toward the powder room down the hallway. Before I reached the door, Maggie had me by my shirt collar. I told you about cursing at me. Now you're gonna get it. Not again. She dragged me back into the living room and bent me over the arm of the chair, holding me with one hand and pulling my pants down just enough to reveal my ass with the other. Maggie. I mean sissy. Please. I'm sorry. I'm, thwack, thwack, thwack. The spoon started raining fire back down on my bottom, and her hand in the small of my back pinned me down in spite of my squirming. Worse, I started peeing uncontrollably. In no time, I was crying like a little girl as pee soaked through my underwear and started running down my legs, saturating my socks as she hammered away at my backside. Just when I thought she'd never stop, the door opened again. Hey sissy, hey JJ. Mommy's home. Maggie straightened up and pulled me to a stand next to her, jerking my pants up in the back, facing me toward the foyer. Sounds like someone was a bad little boy while mommy was, mom walked in and stopped cold, dropping her shopping bags at her feet. What in the world? Mom stood there, mouth wide open. My face flushed beet red, a whimpering mess after having another fire lit on my backside, but now completely humiliated as I stood there in soaking wet pants. 
She wouldn't, I started through my blubbering. Shut up Jamie. I went back to sobbing. Mom looked at Maggie. What happened, sissy? Well, someone was being a little grouch. As soon as you left he told me to F off. Later on he started squirming around, and I asked him if he had to go potty, but he just sat there and sulked, so I left him to sit. Then he cursed at me again, so I gave him a spanking, and he peed his pants, which is when you walked in. Mom, she's lying. She wouldn't let me. Open your mouth again little boy, and you'll be right back over my knee. Mom turned back to Maggie. Sissy, please go get me a couple towels so I can get little JJ cleaned up. Maggie darted off down the hall, sniggering as she went. Bitch. Well, little boy, not only did you prove you weren't ready for school, it looks like you proved that you weren't ready for potty training either. Mom reached into one of the grocery sacks and pulled out a bag of bedwetting pants for boys. I was going to let you wear these during the day, but clearly you just don't want to be a big boy at all, do you? It wasn't my fault, Mom, me. Of course it wasn't your fault. Maggie returned with two bath towels and an evil grin on her face. Mom spread one of the towels out on the floor. You're just a little baby who can't help himself, aren't you? She grabbed my arm and jerked me down onto the towel. Maggie, take the other towel and clean up his puddle over there, and bring me the other bag please. It's okay baby, mommy's gonna get you all fixed up. I struggled, squirming and sobbing, but mom's powerful hand on my middle held me fast. Maggie snatched the second bag and dragged it over, then started wiping the floor with the second towel. Please. Mommy. I don't wanna. I know, you don't wanna be a big boy, we're gonna fix that for you in just a minute. Sissy, go ahead and get those containers open for me. I can't do much with one hand here. Out they came, first the baby powder, then the wipes, then, a bag with Molicare Super across the front. Size XS, it read. Meanwhile, Mom had my soggy pants and underpants stripped off, and she was pulling off my socks one by one. I fought against Mom's grip when I saw that bag. She gave me a hard swat on my thigh. You will lie still, little boy, or I swear I will make you regret it. I was already in hysterics from Maggie's vicious spanking, so all there was left to do was lay there and blubber even louder as Maggie pulled a huge pale purple diaper out of the bag. I was pretty sure this was nothing like the diapers mom used to buy for me when I actually was a baby, it was all plastic, and it made a spectacular rustling noise as Sissy scrunched it in her hands, examining it with glee. Oh, and it was way, way bigger than any diaper I'd ever seen. What a pretty coloured diaper for my whittle baby brother, she sneered as mom wiped me down with several cold wet wipes and covered my whole crotch with powder. I scrunched my eyes shut and covered them with my arms, I couldn't stand to watch anymore. Yes, yes, baby, mommy's gonna get you all fixed up, no need to cry anymore. Sissy, put your hand right where mine is so I can get his diaper on for him. And watch carefully, cause you'll probably need to do this quite a few times over the next couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. I didn't think I could bawl any louder, but somehow I did while mom picked my legs up and slid the diaper under me, taping it up on both sides and giving it a pat in the front. It was a sick sound, hollow and plastic. Of course Sissy will help change Whittle JJ's diapers. Maggie always loved it when I was in trouble, but she was enjoying this on a level that was downright terrifying and if I weren't already sitting on hot coals from the beatings I'd taken already that day, completely humiliated and degraded by pissing myself and being diapered like an infant by my mother, I'd probably be scared of how bad it was going to get when mom wasn't around. So I lay there and sobbed instead, which mom seemed content to let me do until I calmed down. She even told Maggie to go put the supplies in the hall closet, which at least got her off my back for a little bit. Now, Mom said as she pulled me back up to a sit. Mommy was going to let you wear pull-ups during the day from now until school lets out, and wearing diapers to bed, just like you did when you were three and being stubborn about training. 
Of course, after earning yourself two spankings and making puddles on mommy's hardwood floor in one afternoon, I think we're going to have to earn our pull-ups too by showing mommy and sissy both that we can behave like a big boy. Right now, since you're all safe from making any more puddles, you can climb your little baby but onto the couch and sit quietly until the pizza man gets here. Do you think you can do that? I was a slobbering mess by this point, but I managed to whimper, yes mommy, which earned me another very audible giggle from Maggie. Make her stop, mommy. I yelled in a moment of ingenuity. They wanted to treat me like a toddler, then damn it, I was going to at least try and leverage the role a little bit. Sissy, don't be mean to your baby brother. Say you're sorry. Maggie got right up in my face and said, Ah, I'm so wee whittle baby JJ. You're just such a cute whittle baby, I couldn't help it. Then she planted a slobbery wet kiss on my forehead. Here, Sissy help you up on the couch, okay. Without warning, she grabbed me under the armpits and heaved me up swatting my backside with another huge, hollow thump. What a big baby you are. Baby so big. She pinched my cheek and walked away, laughing out loud now. I stared at mom, pouting. What? She said she was sorry. Mom grinned as she stood up. So much for leverage. Now you be a good baby, nice and quiet for mommy, okay? Mommy doesn't want to have to give you any more spankings tonight. Your poor little bottom has probably had enough, huh? Yes, Mommy. Good boy. After supper, Mommy make sure and get Daddy on the phone to say night-night before you go beddy bye Won't that be nice? My eyes bulged. I could tell Dad. He'd make them stop. He wouldn't let them keep this up, would he? Yes, Mommy. I said with a great deal more vigor. I knew that would cheer my grumpy baby up. Be good boy now and watch TV. Mommy has to go talk with Sissy for a minute. Go ahead and talk with her, you hateful bitch. Dad will fix this. Dad's almost seven feet tall. Maybe he'll spank you and Sissy and put you in diapers for being so mean to me. The thought was delightful, but it led to a much less happy thought. Why did my damn sister have to take after dad's side of the family while I took after grandpa? Sis. Maggie was a few inches taller than mom, nearly six feet already at age 16. My granddad was a shrimp at 5'2". And here I was, four foot four, sitting on the couch and in a big, thick, purple diaper. It wasn't even a cool purple like Caius the Shadow Monarch. It was a girly purple, like that faggy My Little Pony star song. The doorbell rang and interrupted my brooding. Go get the pizza JJ, it's already paid for. Mom called from down the hall. I was incredulous. I don't have any pants on, Mom, me. I wasn't moving from that spot if I could help it. The two women appeared in the kitchen. Oh for heaven's sake. Maggie. Go get the door before the pizza man leaves. I'll set the table. Maggie brushed past, stopping to pat me on the head, and I scowled at her. I heard the door open, and she said, Hi, come on in, right through here. My face went beet red. She led him right past me, chattering away. Don't mind my little brother, he's pouting because he got in trouble today. The pizza man, well, teenager, caught a look at me and stifled a laugh. Oh my god, like, how old is he? Twelve, Maggie said. In middle school and still peeing his pants, can you believe it? Her cheerful tone grated me, but I bit my lip and just glared. Oh stop, Maggie. Hey, thanks for bringing it in for us. Just set it on the counter there. Here's a little extra tip for you. Mom tucked him a few bills after he set the two pizzas down. Thanks um. Hey, be safe out there. Pizza man came brushing by me, Maggie at his side. I will um. He looked at me again. Nice underwear, dude. That'll get you all the girls at school for sure. They both laughed as she walked him back to the foyer and out the door, while I just boiled. 
Are you gonna come eat, JJ, or sit there and pout? Mom called from the kitchen. I got up silently, well, other than my underwear rustling, and started toward the breakfast bar, but before I reached my chair, I was lifted up from behind under my arms and deposited in it unceremoniously. Up you go, baby, said Maggie. Cut it out, Maggie. Spanking or not, I was about to lose it on her stupid ass again. Stop it, JJ, your sissy was just being helpful. Now say thank you. My mouth dropped, and I gritted my teeth. I glared at Maggie. Thank you ma, sissy. For what? Mom's hands were on her hips. Thank you for helping me up. Sissy. You're welcome, whittle buddy. Maggie pinched my cheek again as she sat down next to me. I looked at our place settings. Mom somehow managed to dig up one of Maggie's old lidded cups with the crazy straw in it. It was the same faggy purple as my. I mean this stupid diaper Mom put on me, and had my little ponies all over it. At least it still had coke in it, or at least that's what it looked like. Mom piled slices onto each of our plates and passed them back to us. She got thin crust again. I hated thin crust. I like the deep dish pizza, but the two of them were just all about those pieces of tasteless cardboard with sauce and cheese on them. And it was chicken and artichokes and mushrooms. Gross. Mom even ruined the food tonight. Mom and Maggie started eating immediately, while I took a drink from the stupid faggy pony cup and stared at my plate. What's wrong, JJ? Mom asked. Oh never mind, how silly of me. She pulled my plate away, reaching into the silverware drawer. She pulled out a knife and fork and began, cutting up my pizza into little squares. Maggie nearly choked on her mouthful as she started laughing. Mom slid the plate back over to me. There you go, sweetie. Can you eat your own pizza like a big boy now, or do you need Maggie to help? That got me moving. I grabbed a square and shoved it into my mouth as Maggie leered at me. It tasted disgusting. I had to stifle a gag, and now I had sauce and grease all over my fingers. I managed to choke it down and chased it with a sip of soda. Stupid cup or not, it was still coke. I repeated the process a few more times, but I ran out of soda long before I ran out of pizza. I couldn't gag my way through all the little pieces I still had on my plate without something, so I swallowed my pride. Mommy, can, may I have more coke please? Well look at that. He can be a polite little boy when he wants to. Of course, JJ. Mom seemed genuinely pleased with my behavior for once. For once in my whole damn life. The most humiliating, miserable moment in my life, and now she's finally happy. Go figure. I gnawed on a piece of dry crust while I watched her refill my cup and screw the lid back on. Thank you, mommy. What choice did I have? I could either pretend to be nice while I waited for dad to get me out of this mess, or they'd just keep torturing me. I went back to work slowly on the horrible pizza, my hands steadily becoming a mess. I thoughtlessly wiped them on my shirt, and mom gasped as she popped up out of her seat. Oh for heaven's sake. I cringed as she slipped past Maggie and grabbed the hem of my t-shirt. I guess we needed help after all, didn't we? She forced it up over my head then used it to wipe off my hands. Mommy, I... I know, I know, little boys are just such messy eaters when left to themselves, aren't they? She pushed my chair closer to Maggie's and moved my plate and cup out my reach, handing my sister a fork. Help him finish up his supper for me, would you? Of course, Mom. Maggie grinned. I raged. I wouldn't have made a mess if you hadn't cut it into little pieces like that. I yelled, tears filling my eyes again. Oh, is that why you wiped it all over your shirt instead of asking for a napkin like a big boy? Mom's counter was bulletproof. Not that it mattered. Sitting here, naked but for a diaper, crying like a little girl, nothing I said would sound like anything but a tantrum. Now eat your supper like a good boy. 
any more fussing and you're going straight to bed when you're done, you hear me? Yes, mommy. Maggie grinned broadly as she took the last bite of her own pizza. She speared a square with the fork and brought it toward my face. Here comes the airplane, she giggled. I opened my mouth, but she still managed to smear my cheek with it before putting it in.